What's happening? It's Shane here. So today we're going to be going over the best beginner cards. We're going to be doing the beginner credit card tier list. So if you're a beginner, you only have one credit card or maybe you don't have any credit cards. Most of the cards you apply for out there are not going to accept you. And every single time you apply for a card, it's going to bring your credit score down and it's going to make it less likely that you get accepted to another card. So because of that, I decided to make this list, which is the best beginner credit cards. These are all cards you could likely apply for and maybe get early on in the process when you have either one credit card or none. And just because it's a beginner card doesn't necessarily mean it's not a really good one. In fact, my favorite card ever is gonna be on this list. There are others that are good where, you know, it takes a while in order to build up your credit in order to get that one. But surprisingly, some of the best ones are ones that you can apply for right away. So as always, don't forget to smash the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. And let's jump right into this. Number one is going to be the the Amazon Prime Rewards credit card. Now I'm not gonna go over these too much, I'm just gonna very briefly talk about them. But basically you get 5% cash back on all of your purchases at Amazon as well as Whole Foods. 5% cash back is amazing, especially considering the fact that you can order just about anything from Amazon now. You can order almost anything you need around the house, you can order groceries. And sure, some of these things might be a little bit more expensive than they would be at the store, but you also save a lot of time by ordering it online and not having having to go to a physical location. It also gets 2% back at restaurants, drugstores, and gas stations. There's technically no annual credit card fee, but you do have to be an Amazon Prime member. And so if you already shop on Amazon a lot, you're already an Amazon Prime member, this one is a no-brainer. You should definitely try to apply for the Amazon Prime credit card. This one goes in S tier. So the next one on the list is going to be the Apple credit card, and you have to have an iPhone in order to use this one. You get 2% cash back through most purchases as long as you use Apple Pay on your iPhone and you get 3% cash back on a lot of different stores such as Apple Store or if you go to Nike. Now if you have one credit card there's a good chance you'll get accepted for this one. It's probably going to be a little bit harder than some of the other ones on the list and so for that reason you always want to check Credit Karma to make sure that you're going to get approved. They have a tool on there that will predict whether you're going to get approved or not and it's pretty accurate. But overall for a beginner card I'll go ahead and put this one in C tier. Next one on the list is going to be the Bank of America Cash Reward credit card and this is a good beginner credit card that has an extremely good sign-on bonus and it's also a little bit complicated to use if you spend a thousand dollars in the first 90 days you'll get two hundred dollars of cash reward points it gives at least one percent cash back on all purchases two percent cash back at all grocery stores and then three percent cash back in a category of your choice so this is a very popular card with a lot of the credit card youtubers there's entire videos that they make on optimizing their spending you know they use this credit card when they go to this place and then this credit card when they go to that place and they've got like seven different credit cards to make sure they always get like three to five percent back and then some of them do like credit card churning and stuff I'm not super into that to be honest with you I think it's kind of a waste of time like couponing you could definitely be doing better things with your time you could just be side hustling and making a lot more money if you spent the same amount of time doing that but at the end of the day that's honestly just my opinion and the sign-on bonus for this one that where you can get $200 cash back is really good and for that reason it's gonna go in a tier. Next one on the list is going to be the City Double Cash. Now, what I love about this card is it's just so simple. It gives you 2% cash back, 1% when you spend, and then 1% when you pay off the balance on the credit card. There's no sign-on bonus, but there's also no annual fee, so you don't have to worry about that. You can use this card for just about anything. Now, you might have a little bit of trouble getting approved for this one if it's your very first credit card, so make sure you check that on Credit Karma, like I said. But overall, if you can get approved for this one, it is S tier. Another great beginner card is going to be the Discover It credit card. Now this is another one where all the credit card YouTubers absolutely love it because they like to maximize the rewards that they can get. So you can actually get 5% cash back on different rotating categories. So they choose what the category is. The rotating category might be groceries, restaurants, or something along those lines, maybe gas. And it rotates every three months. So every three months it's gonna change to something else. So you have to keep track of that. Now on top of that rotating category, it does earn 1% cash back on all purchases. And it has a fantastic introductory offer where it basically matches all of the cash back that you get in the first year. So let's say you get $100, $200 cash back. It'll match that with another $200. You'll get $400 total. This is a great, just simple credit card that you can get that has an awesome sign-on bonus. And for that reason, it goes in S tier. Next one on the list is going to be the Fidelity Rewards Visa Signature Card. So this 
this one's extremely similar to the city double cash in that you get 2% cash back, pretty much no questions asked. The catch on this one is you do have to open up a brokerage with Fidelity because that 2% gets deposited directly into your investment account. So I guess this one kind of comes with a caveat of you have to be investing already and a lot of people getting their first credit cards probably aren't. But at the same time, I think that's really cool because it would automatically invest for you. So for that reason, if you do have a brokerage account with Fidelity, this one is gonna go into S tier. Next one on the list is going to be the MasterCard Gold Card. Now, if you haven't noticed yet, there's a bunch of credit cards out there that kind of brand themselves to look very similar to other popular cards. You know, you've got Credit One versus Capital One, for instance, and MasterCard Gold Card is gonna be one of those. So there's this huge thing right now where people just think it's amazing to have these metal cards. It's almost like a status symbol. And so MasterCard, card gold card came onto the scene and they were just like okay there's a ton of people who want to have these metal cards but their credit score isn't good enough to get them let's trick these people give them a total piece of crap card that doesn't have good stats at all but it's you know metal and it looks cool i mean that's just my opinion take it for what it's worth but yeah this one is not very good it's got a 995 dollar annual fee and the cash back you get on this one is usually around one to two percent which is very low for an annual fee credit card. The reviews on this one online are bad. Um, also, I feel like everybody would laugh at you if they saw that you had this card. Just, just no. F tier. Next one is the MasterCard Black Card. Same thing. You try to get this one because it kind of looks like the Centurion uh, by American Express. It's, it's just not. It's not though. This one has a $495 annual fee instead of $995, so it's slightly better, I guess. But yeah, no, it's still pretty much F tier. I guess I'll put it in D tier because it's slightly better. Next one on the list is going to be the Target Red Card. And this is gonna be the credit card that uh, people offer you at Target. I generally don't like these uh, types of credit cards because they're designed to basically have you use them at their store. Then you end up spending way more money than you actually need to. And most of them honestly aren't that impressive in the first place anyways. I remember I did get one credit card like this. I totally forgot what it was. I think it was just at a random clothes store and I honestly just was not impressed by it at all. The people always ask you because they get a commission if you sign up for one. But overall, these cards just aren't that great. This one's going in D tier. Next one on the list is going to be the Reflex card and oh, wow. That looks really similar to the City Double Cash card. Amazing. I wonder why they branded it like that. This one is basically for people who have really, really bad credit. And because of the fact that they have bad credit, they can't get a normal card. So I guess this one would be decent for you if you're actually below a beginner. Like you're not just a beginner, but you're actually in the negative. You've got horrible credit. Uh, this one could be decent. But honestly, for a beginner, there's better cards out there. So this one's going in F tier. Next one on the list is going to be the US Bank cash plus card. This is another card that a lot of the credit card channels really love because you're able to kind of like flip flop a bunch of different things and optimize your categories to where you get three to five percent cash back and basically anything. I think it's too much work to juggle cards strategically like that but that's just my opinion. You can earn up to $550 cash back in the first year. Now the sign on bonus is a little bit complicated. I'm not even going to go over it but basically you can only spend like a certain amount in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter to get the cash back and then you also have to spend $500 within the first 90 days and if you do all of those things and you're really careful about it you can get up to $550 by spending a little bit over $2,000 and that 5% cash back that you get you can choose two different categories for then you get 2% cash back on everyday items like groceries and gas and then 1% cash back on all of the other purchases that don't fall under those categories this is a fantastic card for beginners I think this one probably has the best best introductory offer out of all of them. So for that reason, it goes in S tier. Next one on the list is going to be the Capital One Platinum. Now this card doesn't really offer any perks. It doesn't have cash back or any perks or any sign-on bonuses or anything like that. However, it's known for being one that's very, very easy to get as a beginner. So this is one where if you have no credit history, there's a very good chance you can get this one as a beginner. I think there are better ones on the list, to be honest with you, as long as you're smart about it and you use Credit Karma to see if you're gonna get approved 
or not, there's probably better ones that you can use on the list. And so for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in B tier. Next one on the list is going to be the Chase Freedom credit card. And actually this was my first card ever. Now there's a couple different options. You've got the student card, you've got the Freedom Unlimited, and you've just got the normal one. But all of them offer 1.5% cash back. That is really good for just a normal card. There's no annual fee. There's no you know crazy stuff like that. And this one is another one where you're relatively likely to get approved for it. A lot of people also like getting Chase cards early on if they get really into credit cards because of this rule where I forgot the exacts of the rule, but basically within a 24 month period, you can only apply to like four or five credit cards. If Chase sees that you've applied to any more than that, they're gonna automatically decline you on any card that you apply for. And so a lot of people like to get this one for that reason. And then it also has an additional perk of once you do get a better Chase credit card that's got better cash back, you can actually roll your cash back onto that and get that higher amount. So overall, this is a very good beginner card. I would put this one in A tier. Now, if for whatever reason you can't get the Capital One Platinum, which is almost a for sure thing that you can get it, let's say maybe you have some credit history that you didn't even know about, you signed a lease for rent and you didn't even realize it was gonna affect your credit or something like that, what I recommend you do is you get a secured card. Now you wanna get a secured card where basically you put a certain amount of money down and it's almost like collateral in case you mess up. And then, so let's say you put 500 down, you have a $500 credit limit. You use that for a few months, get your credit back up to the point where it's pretty decent. And then you can apply for one of these other credit cards. Now there's a ton of different secured cards out there, like banks everywhere offer them, you know, they're very common. Um, so this is a good option if for whatever reason, the Capital One Platinum doesn't work for you. I'll go ahead and put this one in B tier. Check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below. Thank you so much for watching.